this is Jessica Hagman and Margot Cudahy from, I believe, both, yes, University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign, and they will be talking to us about models of quality of research support infrastructure. So thank you so much, and if you're able to begin, go ahead. Thank you, and uh, thank you so much, everyone, for being here. Um, and we'll just go ahead and get started. So um, I am Jess Hagman. I am the social sciences research librarian at the University of Illinois, and I will let uh, Margot introduce herself. Uh, hi, my name is Margot. I am a grad student in the library and information science program here at the University of Illinois. Okay, so a quick overview, we'll start with some background about um, what we mean by qualitative research and this concept of research data infrastructure. Uh, Margo will talk about um, more detail about how we collected data for this project, um, and then we'll jump into some models that we saw for supporting qualitative research and some ideas that we have for kind of expanding the scope of that infrastructure. So I did want to start with a quick definition of qualitative research, um, because if you've ever tried to define it, you may have realized that it is uh, an extremely squishy category to define. Um, we could talk about data and how it's collected. Um, we often think about focus groups, interview transcripts, but really anything could be qualitative data as long as it's not uh, numeric data. So images, video. Um, I've, I've worked with people who have done, you know, pictures of people's apartments, and it's a very huge range of data that could be um, usually collected um, in some sort of way in contact with the human subject participants, but not always. Um, so huge range of data, um, types of data and, and ways of collecting it. Um, the methods could be something like grounded theory, content analysis, phenomenology, um, and then also paradigms. We often link um, qualitative research with kind of interpretive work, uh, maybe thematic analysis or, um, again, the, the grounded theory where it's very kind of grounded in the data, um, not necessarily meant to be um, an objective represent representation of some, an objective you know, approach. Uh, the researchers are reflexive and think about their role um, in, in doing the data analysis, but it doesn't have to be. Um, you could also use qualitative data um, in a more kind of positivist paradigm where you're kind of counting things or um, trying to do consistent uh, analysis, be more objective. Um, so it's a very wide category, and we recognize that and trying to look at um, how we can support this sort of research. In terms of research data infrastructure, this um, we really take a broad view of any sort of work um, that helps researchers to work with data. So from you know deciding what to do, looking for data, or creating their collecting their own data, analysis, um, even publication and sharing and long-term management. So um, any sort of part of that research process where folks are working with data, um, as there's we're looking for evidence of how um, folks would use, uh, find support for using qualitative data throughout this process. Um, we do have some evidence, um, aside from kind of personal experience, that uh, data work in libraries tends to be slightly uh, less supportive of qualitative data compared to maybe big data or GIS data or statistical data. Um, I think Mandy has described it uh, most succinctly as calling it the Jan Brady uh, and of uh, data work. Um, which, uh, you know, compared to the Marsha, Marsha, Marsha of uh, quantitative data. Um, but it also can be difficult to locate information about qualitative research on library websites and really often requires that you have the name of a software program, which uh, new researchers may not have. Um, there's some evidence that there's uh, this Radecki and Springer had an Ithaca SR. Um, they did a really large survey of research data services and noted some service gaps in the areas of social sciences, business, or digital humanities, um, with more support for bioinformatics, GIS, big data, things like that. And then I've done some own re some research of my own with Hillary Vassell at Ohio State, where we talked to um, librarians about their definition of data literacy and found that it very often focused on um, kind of not being fooled by um, pr presentations of statistical data in ways that didn't really leave a lot of room for other types of data analysis. So this is a study kind of meant to understand what are libraries doing to address, uh, support the needs of qualitative researchers and come up with some um, models of how that, how that works. And so specific questions that we asked were, um, what kind of resources and services are provided for scholars conducting qualitative research? Um, and then we did also focus specifically on this question of software 
for licensed uh, licensed software um, because it is extremely uh, tricky to get licenses set up. Um, it's very expensive for many of the software like in Vivo, Atlas TI. Um, and I don't know if you all have run into this, but working with my own IT folks here, the licensing seems to just be the most difficult compared to any other software that we work with that's constantly not working. So um, I, yeah, so we've also had working, I, based on some interviews I've done, um, seen some challenges with that. So I'm gonna turn it over to Margo to talk about who did the bulk of the data collection to talk about uh, the data that we used. Great, thank you. So um, our data is based off of 18 universities that were designated peer institutions to the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign or who are members of the Big Ten Academic Alliance. Uh, some institutions do fall under both categories and you'll see what that looks like when we share an example of our data. Um, so this small data set allows us to compare services between similar institutions, which helps to provide perspective as we continue to develop our own infrastructure for qualitative research support. And it also serves as a pilot for future data collection. Um, and we also draw our analysis from interviews of faculty members and grad students uh, who are asked about their experiences learning to conduct qualitative research and in using qualitative research analysis tools. Uh, next slide. So the data collection process was pretty straightforward. Uh, we started by identifying and recording the research data services page for each institution's library. And then within this page, we looked for any mention of qualitative data or software and captured any relevant links. We also looked for workshops and other events led by research services, uh, particularly those that explicitly mentioned qualitative research support. Um, and then we then uh, searched the library sites for our designated keywords, which included the term qualitative, um, as well as the name of different qualitative research software uh, like Invivo, Atlas TI, and others. Uh, we recorded any relevant pages that appeared in those searches, and then we repeated the same process for the university's main homepage. Next slide. Uh, so we compiled our data in Notion. Uh, on the slide here is a screenshot of our main database, which includes information like a link to the research data services page and it's cut off, but um, we could note who collected the data. Um, and then we could also label things like group designations, software offerings, and more. And those are the colored boxes that are in each column. Um, and similarly to tables and other spreadsheet softwares, you can use these labels to sort the data. Um, however, this isn't actually a table, it's what I mentioned, it's a database. Um, and so if you look at the institution's names, you'll see a little icon that looks like a little piece of paper. Uh, that means that that opens up into its own page. And so each institution's individual page, we included information that's listed here on the main database. So all the information you see in a row in its own table at the top of the page. Um, and then below that, we had a separate table for more detailed notes and links and other information. And we also had a checklist uh, that we could use to um, note where we were in our search. And so I had never used Notion before, and I highly recommend it. Um, I really like that it keeps all of our information in one distinct place. Um, <laughs> I've worked on projects before where we're sifting through files and wondering, you know, is the data in this spreadsheet or that document? Um, but so this is all linked together in the database and having it linked was really, really helpful. Um, and it's also super customizable. So we had the pages that had tables, we could do documents, um, everything all together. So I highly recommend trying it out if you haven't already. Uh, next slide. And so a quick disclaimer about our data collection limits. We are in no way claiming to have captured every single resource or service available for people interested in qualitative research, uh, simply because we lack the institutional knowledge uh, for each library and campus. That being said, uh, Jess and I both have years of library experience between us. And so we do contend that any resource that we did not include in our data is at the minimum difficult to locate. Back to you, Jeff. Thanks. Um, oh, and I, it's about the software access. I saw all the chats about um, in vivo and um, it, why in teaching something else, uh, a free tool to get is uh, better because you don't have that license issue. Um, and yeah, just it's a very, I, I don't really know why, but the, it's very difficult. Um, in an interview study I did, um, so there I found students who would do things like create multiple trial accounts, they were sharing accounts, um, working with their advisors to try to get payment for accounts. It just adds a whole layer of complexity. Um, so I don't know if this is true in other kinds of um, research, but I think it's an important part of um, doing qualitative uh, research. Um, 
And there's also things like it can be difficult to collaborate in some of the licensed programs. I think there's movement to make that better um, through each software or through the, the refi QDA project, which is trying to make uh, an interoperable data format. Um, but it's still an ongoing project. So that's why we focus so much on this um, software question. So in terms of findings, so we didn't really want to focus on any particular libraries um, services because it's not really what this is about. Um, we're looking at kind of general um, types of infrastructure. And at this point, it's into three categories. So content plus, cur plus curation, instruction, and technology, um, each of these specific to qualitative research. And we'll elaborate a bit on what that looks like. So for content curation, um, of course, we found a lot of libguides. Um, where folks had done really good work pulling together um, qualitative methods related materials. Of course, LibGuides is so great for sharing a book list. Um, and I don't know about you all, but the um, methods textbooks are also annoying because many of them you can't uh, buy on, on digital format anymore because they're, um, they're just not available for libraries to purchase as an ebook. Um, so it is helpful to have a list of things that are maybe in a reference collection or to let folks know what they might um, look for. Um, sometimes there's information on um, repositories that include qualitative data, especially the qualitative data repository, um, but also um, disciplinary um, uh, repositories or things like that. And then sometimes you can see um, in data management resources, there is a mention of uh, qualitative data, although I think generally it's not specific to that um, type of data or qualitative methods. Um, in terms of instruction, um, I think this is more varied in that it's um, sometimes in the library, sometimes other units through um, such as like a central IT um, or some sort of either department or kind of research um, focused unit that may have uh, their task, you know, with providing software support. I think that it, how that works is varies a lot depending on um, how the uh, the university sets up and conceives of support and whose job that is. Um, I do think sometimes, as an aside, that falls to the library because no one else is doing it, much like other things. Um, but yeah, we see this separate across the campus. Um, the focus really seems to be on uh, the software and kind of how the software works. Um, there's less, I think, on kind of how to um, adapt the software for a particular project, um, which is uh, which is probably the, the bigger challenge in some ways. Um, and then some places have workshops or consultations. Um, it may or may not be clear that the services available include qualitative data analysis, um, but it may just kind of talk generally about data without being specific. So the assumption is if you were talking about qualitative data, um, you could meet with someone who could talk to you about data management or um, uh, work, you know, and analyzing your data. And then, of course, technology. Jeff, um, sorry, sorry, this is Mandy. I forgot to give warnings. You have about two minutes. <laughs> okay, thank you. Yeah. Um, so then also this question of technology, um, access. Uh, you might have seen from uh, the screenshot of the Notion database that Margot was showing. Um, we tried to get a sense of whether um, software was available maybe in the library, in a lab, whether you could download it yourself onto your own device. Um, it varies hugely. Um, most folks, if they have software, it seems to be in Vivo or Atlas, but there wasn't a lot of consistency in terms of how that would be accessed. Um, sometimes remote access was available. Um, so it, it very, again, it very much ranges quite a bit. Um, and then sometimes you could find information on the availability of software kind of generally, um, including free options like to get, um, perhaps some information on like transcription programs, or in a few cases, access to like devices that you might need for collecting qualitative data. Um, so to conclude, some ways that this is scope could be expanded here would be to, um, I think uh, in a lot of cases, we saw that these resources and services were very much spread out across campus. Um, so to connect the dots for researchers to you know, build um, libguides that point to the different resources across campus, even if they're not in the library. Um, to attempt to develop instruction that can, helps researchers connect the dots between the software and the actual um, strategies of qualitative data analysis, include information on free tools when licensed software is not available um, or is just going to be out of reach of many um, folks, or to consider how what language is used around data services. So sometimes um, data is used in a way that kind of implies 
big data, numeric data, statistical data, um, which again doesn't leave a lot of room for folks who are working with other types of data um, in ways uh, that they might not see themselves fitting into that service. So I think these are things, um, you know, without adding new people or new resources, ways we could kind of expand the scope. And I will say something that I work on very much here in my own position, um, where we do not actually have software. So kind of trying to build out that infrastructure um, as well. And I believe that actually takes us right to the end. So um, happy to answer questions. I see there's uh, uh, one in the Q&A already. Yes, if you um, can read that, go for it. <laughs> yeah, so you just Googled Notion. Um, you heard it, Margot talk about it, how much she likes it. Um, I like it a lot as well. Um, I'm not sure I could give you a better description than, than Margot did, except to say that it is really, it's like a spreadsheet on steroids and that you can link, it's really a database and that you can link, um, as Margot was describing, so we had uh, for each kind of school, there was uh, a link, uh, like it was a spreadsheet for each school that had information, and then we could pull it into a different um, spreadsheet. So it's kind of like Airtable. I think there's a number of tools that do this right now. Um, yeah, I don't know, Margo, if you want to add anything about more about Notion, I'm not sure I'm describing it very well. I think you have to <laughs> use it yeah. to understand why it's so useful. Yeah, that's a big thing. You got to use it. And um, I highly recommend trying out the templates. I don't know if you, when you started, started with like a template and we worked from there, um, but they provide a lot of templates, which makes it really, really helpful. And I know I had tried in the past and just like use it as a daily planner. And I was like, this is so crazy, overwhelming, but like using it for data actually makes a lot of sense. Um, and like I mentioned, um, having everything linked together in the database is really helpful. I know that everything's cloud-based now. We have Google Drive, we have Box, we have all that, but Having it all in one database is really, really helpful. So you don't have to click between like folders and documents and things like that. And so it's just a really great way to organize and sort through the data um, and keep it all together. Um, and I think you had also asked about um, the free version. Um, we I, I ended up having to pay for a monthly um, because we were working as a team. Um, they have an education version um, that is free for individuals. But I think if you want to get multiple people working together on the same database or team, they call them teams. Um, I think you may need to pay. It was very cheap though. Um, so yeah, and I, yeah, highly recommend, happy to chat more about it. Um, I think Margo would probably be happy to tell you more about it as well. Yes, um, it's much more better shown than explained for sure. <laughs> um, and I would add that it also let us, um, we could create kind of our own templates. So for each um, school, Margo had like a checklist of um, places to look. And we would just put that as a template into each page. So we shouldn't have to like copy and paste. It was all right there. Um, so we could have our notes. So um, really great data collection tool. Um, 